the success, much of the sisterhood that we continue today is based on the decency rather than expediency that Sora Dove has actually taught us as we came along the way. And we want to thank her and say congratulations to her. And we congratulate the city of Atlanta for honoring such a staunch supporter of human rights and decency. Delta Soror My is acknowledging Sarah, Dr. Doug. Pearly Craft Doug. She is so honored today to have three of Atlanta alumni presidents come out this afternoon because Pearlie has exemplified all of the characteristics of a good Delta. She has worked in the Five Point Program and she represents the nine cardinal principles. So Sarah Dove, along with the city of Atlanta, we love you. All right, my name is Carol Ann Dove, and I am Dr. Dove, Pearly Dove's daughter. I drive Miss Daisy. I <laughs> I type for Miss Daisy, I edit for Miss Daisy, and I arrange my life around Miss Daisy's schedule. And I just wanted to let you know two things. One time I was looking for my mother, it was 12 midnight, and she was down here somewhere in City Hall, and I was about to have a fit. The other day, her day started at 12.15 doing civic duties. I was waiting, had to go home and wait, came back to get her. She had another community meeting to go to. I waited. We had a social event to go to, and that started, I believe, at 6 o'clock. She came home at 7.30, and I said, we, I can rest. She said, no, I'm going. And I said, you are going to fall out, and I'm going to leave you with this. My mother will fall out working for her neighborhood and her city. She told me, I am going to be like someone I heard who fell out in the back of the church attending a meeting. I would rather go on my feet than go lying down. So I give her to you. And I help. I will help her to keep going. Well, without further ado, we are going to hear from the woman of the day, uh, Dr. Dove. I'm going to surprise myself and be very brief. So that's why I had a few notes. Because after you've lived 90 years, you know where all the dead bodies are. You know where all, everything is. I won't share all of that with you today. But I'll say good afternoon. Thanks be to God and my grandfather's prayers. I'm just blessed to be here today. First, I must express my appreciation to Councilman Bond and members of the City Council for the proclamation I received. My joy and happiness are tended with a deep sense of humility. I would also like to thank my family, friends, and associates of organizations in which I hold membership for coming out to celebrate this signal honor with me. Now my remarks, brief, are centered around the work I do so passionately am involved in for the city of Atlanta and the Washington Park community specifically. The dire ancestral legacy by precept and example established a number of guidelines for living the good life. Three are lifted up. Always put God first. Love family and respect others. And to whom much is given, much is required. The last one 
to whom much is given, much is required, is the primary reason for my work in the Washington Park neighborhood. I had a wonderful life being reared in Washington Park community. 21st century leaders would refer to it as a choice neighborhood. Founded between 1919 and 1924 by a man of color and his associates, Heman Perry. It was the first black planned neighborhood in the city with all of the amenities, including a park that you call green space, for quality living, moving forward on a fast track. However, by the end of the 20th century, in the name of progress, the neighborhood lost its prominence because of urban renewal, construction of MARTA, extension of I-20, and desegregation. Just before my mother passed, she suggested that I use my energy and know-how to see if I could prevent further deterioration of the neighborhood because of the benefits it provided me, which led to my success in life. My reply, what could I do? Because of the apparent apathy among some of its residents and present leaders, However, I do strongly believe in divine intervention. One day after my mother's demise, as I was reading a yearbook, Spelman College's Jubilee Celebration, and came across a statement by Alice Walker, which caused me to implement my mother's resolve. Listen to the essence of what Mrs. Walker penned. A people do not throw away their geniuses and their works, and we are a people. She goes on to cite, and if they do, it is our duty as witnesses for the future to collect and restore their works, if necessary, bone by bone. Thus, the journey to restore and preserve my beloved Washington Park community, street by street, house by house, vote by vote. The journey to say, at least, has been vexing at times, but with prayer, perseverance, and commitment, I keep on working. Having received this proclamation, I will always look at it as one of the ways to motivate me to keep going on the journey to make certain that legendary figures like Heman Perry and Associates will always be remembered for the significant role they played in Atlanta's growth and development, as well as the seeds they planted, which make it possible for present leaders, like many of you, to hold such lofty offices. And what of my future? I feel the elation of a nine-year-old African lad when he received the good news that a miracle drug had been discovered to cure his AIDS. In replying to a PBS correspondent's question, what are you looking forward to in the future? His reply, one should do all you can in the time you've given with what you have in the place where you are. This too is my commitment. Thank you again and God bless.